Welcome to the 21 Report. I'm Frank Pesci, and I'm here with Speaker Jim Flanagan. Jim, how are you? I'm great, Frank. Thank you. Good to see you, sir. You too. Thanks you for too. having me. Jim, you are one of the world's foremost authorities on strength training and exercise, exercise science. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I'm a cog in a wheel. Uh, I, I helped launch a company called Nautilus back in the day. Um, former physical educator, taught school, and my, my calling, my mission was to teach and help people. And I didn't coach a sport, but Nautilus was invented just up the road, and I jumped on board, bought equipment, started my own gyms, and went to work for the inventor, a guy named Arthur Jones. Mm. And uh, the rest is history. I had a great career. Uh, you know, sometimes, as he said, man plans and God laughs. You don't know what's next, but uh, I was uh, very blessed to accomplish what I did with the, the path I chose. So. Excellent, excellent. Is this your first time speaking at the 21 event? Second time. I think it was five years ago uh, with the young 21-year-olds. And you spoke at 21 convention? Yep. Excellent. Right. Yes, excellent. Right. So what do you think of the event so far that Anthony has put together? Very impressive. Uh, I, I see these people are just, they're, they're searching for something, they're looking for something, and they're trying to figure it out. And uh, that says a lot about them. That means a lot of the people here are self-starters. Right, right. Yeah. Which is important because, as you know, like anywhere, any industry, any room that you enter, about 95% of people are following the work that the 5% had created for them. That's exactly right. The 80-20 thing. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. Excellent. What's it like meeting your fans? Well, I mean, uh, just young people. And, you know, you're here to uh, hopefully get a few points across. Uh, you know, I, I told them early on, I can't teach you anything in one hour, but if I can get your attention and stimulate your thinking that uh, you weren't that way when you got here, then it's worth my time. So... Yeah, excellent. So tell us about your speeches. I personally had the opportunity to sit in on them, so I have the benefit of, you know, having received that, but I want the audience to hear it too. Well, you, I've always stayed as a physical educator, and of course they call it exercise science major now, but uh, that was my uh, foundation, and so I always take the position, if I can help that person, he may be a customer, or he may be a prospect, or he may just be somebody who's wanting knowledge you give time and it when you give time and there's no monetary situation it all comes back to you down the road and i've always lived that way i mean i've i've housed them i've taken them home i've fed them uh i taught them and you know it, it's, it's the gratification is there and so it's just uh it's what i do it was clear to me in your speeches that you're very you have a heart for service you're very service oriented well, in the gym business, if you don't uh, service them, they quit coming, and they pay the bills. And that's, that was early on. I had that for almost 15 years. And uh, you, you develop your skills, and you develop relationships with people. And as it, it, ele electronic as we are today, and, you, and you, you're in that market and that world because you're younger, you still have to get in front of people. You have to get eyeball to eyeball, and you still have to build relationships. It's a relationship business. And like I said in the talk, you know, when you put yourself in front of that person, it's going to come back and bite you sooner or later. Right, right. So what you're saying is it's important it, when you're in business and when you're in a relationship that you put other people before you. Right. That is to say, to have a fiduciary relationship. Uh, exactly, right? exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Since COVID has hit, I have seen that companies have put aside customer service and put aside client first thinking in pursuit of profits or whatever, brand management or politics even. When's the last time you uh, called somebody and answered the phone with a live person? Yeah, no, that's true. Hard, hard to find today, and yeah, it's too bad. And that personal touch, in fact, uh, we just had a major hurricane come through here, and uh, we talked to a, a, a lady at five o'clock in the morning with a construction company, and she, I would hire her yesterday. Her name is Holly. And she was so attentive and caring about because she we had we had some damage and we had some we had a remodeling job coming up, a big tree fell and and I go you know you don't find people like this especially at five o'clock in the morning but right. that's her company but she was unbelievable so yes yeah, that personal touch you can't put a price tag on that today it's like finding a diamond in the rough I, I'm like you Absolutely. if I have a customer service experience with somebody and I am a business owner too so I'm always looking with that sure. eye of sure you know where's the potential where's the talent I mean it's like it's like uncovering a gem, man, a diamond in the rough. It's hard to find. It is. 
So with that, you have built a long, um, distinguished career and Rolodex, which depended on networking and meeting people. Well, I, I, I travel a lot and I always had a, a rule of thumb. Uh, if I'm on the West Coast in California, there's a three hour time difference, as you know. So if you call me in my office and left me a voicemail before 12 o'clock, I'm out there, I call you before 5 p.m. your time. All right, if you call after lunch between 12 and five, I'll call you before the next noon day the next day. I've, I, I never miss, I always live by that. Promptness is a key word there. You have to, timing's a key. You, you don't wanna delay people, so. And it also sounds like you were very serious about prioritizing what's important. That is to say, you're on the East Coast, you're three hours back from Pacific time, but you are making sure that you are making the call in consideration that they um, exactly. You know, exactly. Are not on the same schedule as you. Exactly. Which is which is the way it should. Sometimes be. you work late at night. So you know. in your networking journeys, and I heard your speech. I know you've traveled the world doing yeah. what it is that you do. What were some of the tactics, strategies, ways that you approached relationships to form a solid relationship at its inception, keep that relationship, monetize that relationship, maintain that relationship for the long term? It's real simple. You back your word. If you put your handshake out there, you you live by it. And if you say you're gonna do something, you do it. it it's, it's it. Uh, you don't lead people along the way just to try to get the sale. I don't like quotas. I like goals for mm -hmm. the company, for the players, but I want the job done right. And that's what we, we live by. It. We, they, they, we never had a real problem. And there's the human, the human element is always gonna be there some people are a little bit more aggressive than others. You got to learn to bob and weave and deal with them and hit the right impulses and the right touches to get them to you know open up to you. So it's there's a there's a game of psychology with people, as you know, because you you've lived it too. So, um, but I was lucky. How often do you meet people that stand by their word? By by well, you know, it's funny you say that. I, I'm in another business at night with this uh, steakhouse called Christmas Prime Steakhouse in Orlando. I've been I'm in my 20th year, but I was I was brought in to tighten up, tighten it down, set the parameters, make sure the standards are in line, and we don't deviate from it. And we've accomplished that with good people. And it's funny you ask that question. Uh, and and I people, I'll say, here's my number. Call me anytime. Oh, I'm, I want to see. I'm gonna set up a time. Never hear from them. Very seldom. They don't live up to it, a lot of them. They, right. And I understand because they get sidetracked. They got their issues. They got their things in their world. But every once in a while, later on, they'll call. I had a phone call last night from a guy in New Jersey. Last night, 7 p.m., my night off. I took it. He has 10 machines in his home. I, I talked to this guy five years ago. He's in his 60s. He's got a little bit of memory problem. All right, he's getting confused a little bit, so that's, you know, but he still works out. He's had, he had a list of questions. I answered every one of them. He called back 45 minutes later. I hate to bother you, but I got one more question. Frank, you go ahead and ask me the question. He did, I was on the phone another 20 minutes. I'm not, I got rewarded for it at some point in time, but I helped the guy. He's reaching out. He wanted head questions he, that nobody can answer for him, and it was, it's the right thing to do. I said, I let to go to the voicemail. No, I had to call him back today anyways. So I took the call. You, you just strike when the iron's hot. Right, right. And what you did was provide an experience that was set apart from what is otherwise being provided so often in business and relationships. Yeah. So right now we're at a crux in culture where, where things are changing, especially the way that people communicate. You, being an elder, having tons and tons of life experience and have had the opportunity to watch these changes occur in our society, what would you like to see going forward or what advice would you offer people to bring forth better communication and better outcomes and relationships? Well, slow down a little bit. We're, we're, we're at such a fast pace and uh, you're seeing this from a medical standpoint, uh, the younger generation, you and on down, are having uh, vision problems earlier now. You're having uh, brain fatigue more frequently than you did before at an earlier age. You're having, uh, we have sedentary living habits, which is creating an obesity pandemic because they're sitting all the time. And uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, I mean, this is, I mean, from the psychology aspect of it, people are not, they're not moving. 
they're stuck. It's this and this and that. Now, we grew up on the TV in the 50s, but we were monitored. We didn't have three or four hours a day. End of the hours, you had a, if you didn't do your homework, you didn't watch TV. You know, we were disciplined or, or being disciplined. Uh, you just need to slow down a little bit and get off that thing, shut that thing down a little bit. And it just, and it, it's there, it's not gonna go away. But we are changing and uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, you gotta adapt to it to a certain level, you know. Some, some old timers don't, they won't change, but that's, you know, if you wanna survive, you've got to make adjustments, so. You know, I, I apologize because uh, a lot of people probably wanna hear your perspectives on exercise. But I sat in your speech and I was so moved by your mindset principles and your purpose-driven attitude and your desire to affect the attitude of the younger generation. And that's why I chose to leave with these questions. Um, what I'd like to do is just shift it a little bit now towards those exercise questions, if that's okay. Sure. And sure. I, I think the audience and certainly I would like to know what are some of the most important guiding principles that we need to keep in mind when it comes to exercise and the trends that are in exercise and just the overall science of health and functional fitness. Sure. We'd love to hear from you on that. Sure. Given your background. Well, exercise is a requirement for survival, for a quality of healthy life. Now, of course, there's many forms of exercise back in the Late 60s, the governing body called the American College of Sports Medicine, they were looking for somebody to lead that group to the next level. And they found a guy who was a, uh, I think he was a captain in the Air Force. He was a flight surgeon. He's famous, Dr. Ken Cooper, mm. the aerobics guru who wrote several books in aerobic training. And he got people off the couch. Well, before that, there was a guy named Jack LaLanne Sure. Who I got to know very well. Five foot four. He was a dynamic individual. He just promoted it, and he he was exciting. And he he got, he got women in the TV set, black and white, in the fifties, off the couch. So these people all had an influence, you know. But lived to be ninety six, Jack Elaine. Yeah, I knew I knew his his wife very well, Elaine Lala. They call her just, and I knew his son, and uh, I knew him pretty well through the industry for since the seventies. So, but. So the aerobic movement takes place, and, 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 and we as a company, Nautilus, exhibited every year from the early 70s to the, through the 90s with Nautilus and Medics at their annual scientific meeting, which was thousands of worldwide PhDs that do all the grants and publishing and uh, academia and medicine. Well, each year you'd watch these people from afar, and you'd go, golly, here's these guys, they're in their running suits at five o'clock in the morning, running the streets, getting their miles in. How many miles did you run? I did 10, well, I got 12. They're all trying to one up each other. Then they have the opening reception and it's ice carvings and everybody's dressed up, their lapel pens and their pipe, you know, they're, you can cut the air with uh, attitude. And they're all talking about their mileage and this and that. So fast forward each year over a 20 year period and these people end up with bone on bone Loss of, loss of muscle mass, loss of height. They're feeble, frail, they got a great heart and lung. So I'm thinking, something's not, something's not clicking here. They're overdoing it. They're over, they're doing something. And, and I understand competition. If you want to run a marathon, you got to train for it. But the, that's, the, it kept on and on and on. So I go, something's wrong here. So now we came from a position of weight lifting, weight training, not weight lifting. Weight lifting is a sport. Weight training is what you should be doing because your muscles do all the movements for you. They're going to keep your posture up, they give you mechanics, give you strength to continue and get the day's chores done. The side benefit is you change your physique if you're a male and you change your figure if you're a woman, properly done safely. But there's so much misinformation out there that people have to sift through and figure out what is good, what is right, and how much, how often. You know, and that's they, they don't know. Most of them don't know. And there's certain things that you can do out there that are very extremely dangerous. And you've got to, and some of them are worthless, but it's, it's part of the whole deal. Some of these, it's, it's, you're basically, uh, it's like going to the health club, it's canned air. You can't take it with you. Like going to get a hamburger at a franchise. So uh, everybody, unfortunately, everybody that's in it is an expert. Therefore, you got a thousand opinions from a thousand experts and people don't know what, to, they just follow along with and do what they are told to do. Right, right. And if you, I'll say this, if you get hurt exercising, you've done something wrong. I have trained 
several thousand people since 1972 under my guidance and my gyms, and we never tore muscle, we never broke a bone, we never ripped a tendon, we never hurt anybody. So that says a lot right there. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's the way, you, it's the style of performance, how you do it. Have you had an opportunity to train professional athletes or? Train a lot of them. Yeah? Yes, sir. Lots. Anybody that we would know or could know? Uh, well, uh, Dick Buckus was on our staff for eight years, and uh, he was one, one person who would walk in, do the workout, go throw up, come back and finish. He, he pushed it. He'd get after it. Yeah. But I had, I had oh gosh, I mean, I can name hundreds of people we dealt with. We had uh, professional tennis players, martial artists, top guys, NFL football players, basketball, NBA, Dave Cowns. I had Dave Cowns, nine machines in his house. Boston Celtic so, Hall of Famer. So with that being said, should people train to be functionally fit for the lifestyle that they live? Like, does a football player require a different type of training than a boxer? Well, that's a good question. Uh, machines that we designed were based on muscle function. Your muscles have the same functions as my muscles. That muscle function doesn't change. So what you do is you analyze the primary movers, the muscles involved in the given activity, and you train those muscles. Here's an example. You, you probably saw a gymnastics match. You ever seen anybody do the Iron Cross on the on rings? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, yes. okay, well, okay. So you take that uh, individual and you start training his legs, you goofed up because the legs are non-functional. In that particular sport, you've got to train all these muscles up here and get them strong, as, as strong as you can to protect him from getting hurt and to aid him in his competition. But if you put 10 or 15 pounds of muscle on the legs, that's non-functional that particular activity. So basically we train, we train football players, baseball players, wrestlers, almost the same way with the exception of neck exercises for any contact sport. So, so it's uh, muscle, stre uh, strength is general, skill is specific. And uh, you gotta separate the two. And unfortunately, what's happened in our fitness world today is these so-called trainers incorporate skill with overload. That's a, that's a kiss of death, because you will get hurt sooner or later. And this is not worth it. So conditioning over here is general, skill specific. So before somebody commits to an exercise program, like for instance, we have CrossFit that's out there now. We have, you know, all kinds of trends that happen in exercise, yeah. you know, every year, all the time, seasonally, whatever. How should somebody approach getting involved with a new trend, abandoning what they've known to work in the past? Um, is there a level of due diligence that's required, research? I mean, how does well, somebody do this you, and commit wanna, for the long you term? Wanna, you want to get approval from your physician to, to do a standard, just whether, whether a physical, just to get documentation. Not that they know anything about exercise. But is that a disclaimer, or do you really mean that? Uh, probably more of a, a protector. I mean, okay. we, I never did it. I mean, we just we just did it. You know? Right, right. We didn't have anybody guide us. But uh, here's an example. Back in the day, I had three neck machines covering the seven functions of the neck to get your neck strong because you may be a wrestler or a football player. So I'm going to train your neck. Today, you can't have those in your gym because of liability. See how we squeeze, it's squeezed out. So, it, so it's just you know, things that tighten down and you got to be careful and everybody's certified. Well, who certified you? What makes that person the expert? I mean, it's, it's not complicated. And uh, you know everything you need to learn about proper exercise is on a website called ArthurJonesExercise.com. I mean, it's a million words of information, and uh, those are articles he wrote, and uh, you can agree with them or maybe not, but the information is there and it works. Did but you say Arthur Jones Exercise? Arthur Jones Exercise .com. .com. Yeah, I got him. John Turner put that on the uh, internet years ago. With, and, I mean, a lot of hard work to do that, but it's very systematic, and you can learn. What, what you need to do, so. Amazing. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think it's important for men to attend an event like this, particularly 21 convention? Well, I, from what I see it is, I mean, they, uh, you, 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 they're here for a reason. They're searching, which uh, that, that's, that's good. They're, they're self-starters. And the information, you've got speakers you're providing for them to hopefully motivate them and get them in the right direction and reinforce maybe what they already have learned to help them, so. Right on, right yeah. on, yeah. okay. Well, thanks for watching the 21 Report. I'm Frank Pesci with speaker Jim Flanagan. Thank you.